I'm Wayne Harris. Today I'm going to introduce Dr. Kwok, who will be discussing the emerging technology out of Hong Kong by RHT and in particular the NCCO technology. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, nice to meet you here. Nice to meet you. So, uh, how shall I start? Um, perhaps I'll start off with a brief introduction of myself. Please. Uh, and then I'll talk about the uh, motivation for having this particular technology that is turned into an air purification system. Mm. So, okay? Very good. Very good. So, um, hello everyone. So my name is uh, Ezra Kwok. Uh, just to give you a bit of my background, um, I uh, was trained as an engineer uh, some years ago, and I also obtained my uh, PhD degree in engineering. A um, few years later, I actually decided to go back to school, and I chose to go into medical school, and I also obtained my medical degree. Uh, in my... Uh, career as, a, uh, 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 as an engineer, uh, I actually worked for uh, two oil companies, uh, Imperial Oil, which is Esso, uh, and also another one is uh, Syncru. Uh, I worked for Syncru as a consultant, uh, and then I came to UBC as uh, a professor in engineering. Um, so I've taught, UBC, I've taught at UBC for 25 years already. And a couple of years ago, I decided to uh, convert my time uh, into mostly medical practice and a little bit of teaching and some consulting. So that's a bit of my background. So I've listed uh, uh, some of my uh, experiences here. Um, in addition to me being a former professor of engineering and current uh, adjunct professor of engineering at UBC, uh, I'm also a medical advisor uh, for different organizations, and one of them is uh, WorkSafe BC. Uh, and I also uh, am the board examiner for the uh, professional organization for professional engineer uh, in British Columbia. Um, and uh, one of the uh, milestones that I have established is that I actually started the biomedical engineering program uh, at UBC. So I'm the founding director for the biomedical engineering program here. So, uh, Wayne, if you have any question, feel free to stop me in. I will, thank you. Thank you. All right, so uh, what I'd like to do is to introduce this uh, unique technology, okay? In short, we call this NCCO. Um, uh, NCCO uh, is an acronym for Nano Confined Catalytic Oxidation. Uh, this is a unique technology that has already received a U.S. patent, and it's currently owned uh, by RHT Industries, uh, uh, which is a company headquartered in Hong Kong. Uh, the technology itself uh, was actually developed uh, at the uh, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. So uh, NCCO, this particular technology, has been uh, in use for the past 14, 15 years already. So it is not brand new that was developed like, like last year, okay? It has been uh, used by many uh, companies, many facilities, many organizations already. So how is this superior than the current existing technologies that people are familiar with? Uh, let me show you a simple table here, okay? So you can see that on my left-hand side here, so I've, I've listed uh, some of, uh, so different uh, uh, components here, like uh, things like formaldehyde, uh, VOC, uh, particulate matters, like fine particles, uh, you've got bacteria, ozone, and some of the other stuff, okay? And then um, I've got a, a number of columns that uh, actually uh, listed some of the uh, existing methods for air purification. For example, we've got uh, the activated carbon, which is the most popular one uh, that, that everybody is familiar with. All right. Uh, there are uh, also other technologies like ionization, uh, 
uh, and also uh, filtering as well. So you can see that NCCO is in column one here, pretty much, okay? And you can see that NCCO, this technology can deal with all these uh, chemicals and uh, uh, organisms as well, as well, okay? Some of the other, uh, so all the other technologies can deal with some, but not all. Uh, currently in the market, there are actually different uh, uh, brands, all of them. Uh, so you can see that uh, examples like you know, Panasonic and Dyson, okay. Uh, the common thread is that they all use some type of uh, activated carbon, charcoal, okay, plus something else, okay. Um, what's unique about NCCO is that it is not activated carbon, okay, it is not charcoal, okay. There are some uh, clear disadvantages for using charcoal activated carbon, okay. Um, one of the uh, clear disadvantages of activated carbon is that you have to replace the activated carbon frequently if you want to maintain a certain performance. All right, and activated carbon uh, lifetime, uh, sorry, the uh, the service life. Uh, you hear that people will say that oh, you know, you don't have to replace the activated carbon uh, uh, until a year later. Okay. The reality is that activated carbon, actually the performance drops over time, all right? And when someone installs the activated carbon uh, based air purifier uh, in, an, in a confined space, the active sites of activated carbon will drop. And eventually all the active, active sites are saturated, okay? So what happens is that if you are not aware, then Basically, the activated carbon is not really doing any filtering, okay? Uh, so in order to make sure that the activated carbon is working, you pretty much have to replace the activated carbon every three to six months. In some cases, when the environment is very polluted, you will have to replace it every month. So the problem with activated carbon is that, then what happened to the, when you replace it? Well, when you replace it, you take it out, uh, you throw it away, okay? You put a new one in. So it actually generates a lot of uh, garbage. At the same time, when you, when, the, when you take the activated carbon out, there is what we call a secondary pollution, okay? Because when you uh, remove it, those chemicals, those, uh, uh, those ingredients that have been trapped in activated carbon will get released, okay? So, NCCO is quite different. So this shows kind of like an overall uh, 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 idea of how NCCO works. Of course, you know, you've got this pre-filter, which is standard some, uh, for a lot of the air purification systems. Uh, some, some can also include the static filters, okay? Uh, in NCCO, uh, one of the key differences is that it's got an oxygen, uh, an active oxygen generator. Okay, and so uh, NCCO would have this active oxygen that would flow together with all those contaminants through a HEPA filter. The first stage is that at this level, the active oxygen would begin to uh, deactivate, uh, even destroy some of the chemicals or organisms in the air. And then, uh, the, some of the products, or, so uh, the active oxygen with all those partially destroyed or partially disintegrated chemicals or active ingredients would then enter in the, what we call the NCCO reactor. So this reactor inside, basically uh, you need zeolites with some transitional metals, okay. And then all those uh, ingredients, okay, uh, uh, products passing through the HEPA filter would go into the zeolites. And inside zeolites, there are a lot of uh, nano channels, okay? So I've got a simple schematic to illustrate this idea, okay? So there are micro and nano pores inside all those zeolites, okay? 
And of course, the zeolites uh, are treated with uh, transitional metals, okay? So the active oxygen uh, basically would go in and the zeolites, the nanochannels, will trap all those uh, chemicals, okay? Or partially disintegrated, okay, components. So the zeolites are good at, 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 at trapping those things. So there are a lot of microchannels there. So one small uh, zeolite uh, uh, pearl, okay? So later on, I'm gonna show you uh, that pearl. That pearl is about, you know, five, uh, three to five millimeter large. But inside one uh, zeolite rock, okay, it's got about 300 feet of nanochannels, okay? And so the ch all those nanochannels will trap all these chemicals and ingredients, and the active oxygen will continue to destroy and disintegrate them. And at the end, the, bypro the, the end product would be just mostly water and carbon dioxide. So that is the power of this technology called NCCO, okay? So uh, I'm gonna show you uh, some of the uh, illustrations, okay? So we've done studies you know, using different chemicals, okay? Uh, including uh, particulate matters, like fine particles, okay? You've got formaldehyde, benzene, you know, uh, acetone, even ammonia. You know, ammonia actually is quite common, especially in washrooms, okay? You know, go in a washroom, you can smell those ammonia pretty much, okay? So you can see that, okay? Um, the performance of NCCO pretty much is like at least 95% and above, okay? So it's a very efficient and powerful technology. And the good thing about this NCCO reactor, if I go back to this slide, is that this one is kind of equivalent to active, uh, like a, like a, 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 a activated carbon, okay? Uh, activated carbon, as I mentioned earlier, you have to replace it probably every three to five, three to six months, okay? Sometimes every month. This can last, guess how long? I have no idea. <laughs> In a lab evaluation environment, this thing can last up to 10 years, sometimes 12 years too. You don't need to replace this thing for that long period of time. Of course, in a practical environment, you know, we would recommend people to consider replacing it, you know, maybe after seven years, eight years, okay? So imagine if this was an NCCO reactor, it would be activated carbon, okay? How many times you replace it before you start replacing this NCCO? Right? So it's a huge difference. Okay? So this is a very uh, sustainable and very environmental friendly technology. I have a question on yeah. that. Is the zeolite, is it, is it a man made product? Zeolites are pretty much like uh, volcanic rocks from nature. So, I'm going to show you another slide that illustrates the performance of NCCO. Now, this one, this one is not chemical, okay? I'm showing you uh, organisms, bacteria, okay? Fung fungi, virus, okay? So you can see, you know, uh, E. coli is also shown here, okay? So sometimes these uh, uh, live organisms, you know, whether you call it, uh, whether they're bacteria or fungi, they actually can flow in the air, okay? And NCCO can still capture them, destroy them, just like NCCO destroys all the chemical uh, 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 pollutants. Okay, so you can see that the performance is pretty high. Like for E. coli, it's ninety-seven point nine two percent. Okay, so it's, it's a very very powerful technology. Okay, and uh, I'm going to show you a very brief um, uh, video. So one minute long to show you the power of cleaning the air. So here you can see that we have a machine here inside this chamber, okay? And then we put, have to uh, reduce the volume. My apologies, okay? So you can see that there are two petri dishes, okay? 
one inside the chamber, one outside the chamber. Obviously, the one inside the chamber, the air is being cleaned, regenerated by the NCCO filter. The one on the outside is exposed to the environment. After 72 hours, you can see the difference. This is picture juice inside. This is all the mold and bacteria being grown okay, on the picture juice. This is a clear illustration of how NCCO cleans the air. Now, what about viruses? People always ask, especially when we are dealing with COVID-19, okay? Uh, the, the SARS-CoV-2 uh, type virus, okay? Um, what, how, how NCCO does is that it, NCCO can destroy things that are kind of like hydrocarbon based, okay? Like uh, petrochemical, okay, uh, benzene, uh, formaldehyde, all those kind of like hydrocarbon based. Bacteria and viruses are also similar in that they are also make up of carbon, hydrogen, and different components. So that's why when NCCO can destroy bacteria and fungi, NCCO can definitely destroy viruses, including COVID-19. Thank you. So uh, we also have the latest report uh, that shows that NCCO can actually destroy and deactivate coronavirus. Now, people ask us, uh, they always ask, okay, can you, uh, can you tell us why you don't test your machine against COVID-19 virus, okay? The problem is right now, because the, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, or equivalent to COVID-19 virus, okay? It is a very deadly virus that has been controlled, uh, uh, that needs to be controlled when you want to do experiments. Right now, all the government agencies, okay, require that the COVID-19 testing has to be done in level three labs, at least. And so, no one can really take the virus out and try to test it, okay? Uh, unless it is in a level three right, or above lab, okay? And so what people do usually would be to use something very similar, and that is the coronavirus. So coronavirus is basically the umbrella name for all the coronaviruses, okay? So COVID-19 is one of those coronaviruses, okay? All right, so, um, I'm so what I've shown here uh, are some of the uh, updates, okay, from uh, different sources, okay? Uh, CNN, back in April, basically says that scientists push for acknowledgement of airborne transmission of uh, COVID-19, pretty much. Harvard School also showed that, okay, small increase in long-term exposure to PM 2.5, particulate matter, okay, 2.5 micron, leads to a large increase in the COVID-19 death rates. That's back in April 2020. Okay, last year, okay? Also, it, it took a while for uh, US CDC to finally update uh, its own guideline in September 2020. And it says that uh, use of air purifiers to help reduce airborne germs uh, is basically recommended, okay? Some people also ask, okay, is NCCO safe, okay? I mean, this is a, a rather uh, uh, newer technology, put it this way, okay? Well, I can tell you that all the products, okay, uh, have been certified to be safe, uh, and the, uh, it, it has gone through certification uh, and received the ETL uh, certification, and, which is a, an international certification, uh, including Canada and US. Any questions? Okay, thank you. All right, so the uniqueness of NCCO pretty much effectively removes germs, oh, older, okay? Uh, VOCs, like chemicals, formaldehyde, all those things that I've listed here. And as I mentioned earlier, so the reactor lifespan, okay, of five to seven years, as I said, in a controlled laboratory environment, it can last up to 10 to 12 years. In practical terms, I think, uh, so five to seven years, seven years would be reasonable. 
if you want to make sure that things are running well, you can replace it even five years. Okay, so and then the disposal of the reactor. Now here is a, also a key difference. Activated carbon is acts like a, a magnet. It traps all the chemicals, all the germs. Activated carbon does not kill germs. Okay, some people thought that activated carbon air, air purifier would kill germs. No, activated carbon is almost like a magnet, it just traps all those things inside, okay? And so when you remove that activated carbon uh, 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 core, uh, there would be secondary pollution coming out. And when you throw it in the landfill, you are causing environmental pollution. You're just uh, moving pollution from one place to another place. NCCO doesn't do that. It basically destroys disintegrate, cleans the air, okay, regenerate the air so that it becomes fresh air. Okay? It does not cause environmental pollution. At the end, when you have to dispose the NCCO reactor, those are just CO light rocks. Okay? And they are not dirty rocks. Okay? <laughs> they don't trap contaminants. Okay? Um, here is another uh, video to show how NCO can actually, uh, how powerful it actually removes, uh, oh, sorry, um, the uh, VOCs, okay? So again, it th it's not very long, I'm gonna show you quickly. So here, you can see the NCCO air purifier inside the chamber, okay? And you've got the uh, measurement of VOC in uh, 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 parts per billion, okay? And then we inject a bit of uh, VOC acetone, okay, inside, okay, and you can see that the the reading jumps so high, okay, <laughs> very high, very high, okay, and uh, this is I can't even read the unit now. It's so high, okay, and, okay, high, and then we turn on the NCCO air purifier, so. Within a reasonable time, okay, about, oh, let's see how long, I don't even remember how long it runs for, okay. So you can see that the, the uh, acetone concentration drops so quickly, okay. Right now it's almost five minutes, okay. It's come back down to about uh, 200 ppb, and then it's going to go further, okay. So uh, it's hard to see the, the, uh, the fume, okay? It's very hard. Now it's almost down to zero, almost. Okay, oh, there you go, okay? Within about 10 minutes, it just clears all the acetone inside the chamber, okay? Now, here's another uh, special unique feature of NCCO, okay? Uh, we all know that in North America, okay, uh, um, a lot of places have already legalized the use of marijuana, all right? Uh, two problems with marijuana, okay, in terms of air pollution. One is the smell, the odor, okay? People don't like it, okay? Second is, what about all those uh, uh, chemicals, okay, from burning marijuana? Those things may stay in the air, okay, for a long time. So I'm gonna show you this one-page summary. So we just did a, an experiment recently to see how powerful NCCO can to reduce the marijuana odor and also the chemicals from burning marijuana, okay? So you can see that here's a person holding the kind of the joints <laughs> that we burned. We have a room that has our NCCO air purifier here, all right? And here, what I've shown is uh, the two key ingredients Okay, kind of, okay, the, the, because like marijuana basically contains about uh, several hundred different types of chemicals. There are two uh, chemicals that people usually make reference to. One is THC, the other one is CBD, okay? So we actually measure uh, the equivalent of THC and CBD. And you can see that the blue line basically represents the percentage reduction of those chemicals 
okay? This one is 90 some percent. 90 some percent. This is also 90 some percent. The other color, okay, that is hardly visible, shows that when you don't have NCCO, this is the, per per this is the percentage reduction, pretty much zero. So you see how powerful NCCO is. It actually removes 90 plus percent of chemicals from burning marijuana. I have a question yep. for you on this as well. So this is marijuana. Um, how does it cope with, uh, like, for people who have allergies with pollen um, and such like, and smoking, not just marijuana, how does it cope with the, uh, the air pollution? I can tell you that. The same technology works so well with airborne allergens, whether they are from cigarette smoking, cigar, uh, flowers, yeah. okay? uh, or even different household products. Pets. All those are pets, exactly. Dog hair, cat hair. You know, there are so many examples that uh, people share about uh, the improvement of their allergy level after they actually use the NCCO air purifier inside their homes. So countless, ex countless, countless examples, you can tell you that. All right. And then in terms of odor reduction, okay, you can see that we have an odor scale from one to five. Five is the maximum, one is the minimum. Now, okay, we have uh, two lines, okay? The blue line represents the use of NCCO. You can see there is an odor reduction of almost uh, three points. When you do not have NCCO, of course, over time, the smell will dissipate, right? And so you can see a natural drop, okay? When you do not use NCCO air purification system. Then people will ask us, well, how come it doesn't go down to zero? Well, the reality is that when you burn all those things in a confined space, those chemicals will stick to the walls, your clothes, your face, your hands. You have to wash those things in order to come, totally remove all those uh, smells. All right, so that's why. Okay, so we have different products. You know, if you, if you want to swing over here, you know, these are household products. Okay, so uh, the handheld one, the medium size, we also have a larger size that is not shown here, but. Here you can see that this is a larger size, okay? But not only household products, we also have commercial grade units, okay? So what I've shown here, uh, different uh, ceiling type, air purification systems. Uh, you also have a special one that is very useful expressly for North America in terms of energy uh, saving. So this is uh, uh, ELV, you know, energy recovery uh, ventilation units, okay? So, as I mentioned before, there are different advantages of using NCCO, safety, health, and sustainability. Um, I'm gonna show you one example here, okay? I mean, there are different examples, but because of time, I'm gonna just focus on a few, okay? So this is a, an NCCO unit being used uh, in the medical sector. They actually install these commercial units, okay? Uh, it's a very simple installation. Uh, it's up just up in the ceiling, and there are different facilities, okay, that have already been using the uh, commercial unit NCCO. Okay, another example, Queen Mary Hospital in Hong Kong, all right, uh, another hospital that has already used NCCO, uh, again, another uh, hospital. Now, let, let me focus on the, uh, the other uh, health issues that people deal with, okay. So, uh, because we work uh, in different areas, you know, there are so many chemicals, bacteria, virus, even uh, allergens floating around in the air, okay? What NCCO does is that it can actually remove uh, all this or disinfect or even deodorize the air, okay? So here's one example that uh, is shown here. You can see that this is a landfill. So what happened is that we have this uh, HSBC bank, okay, which puts a data center, okay, next to a landfill, okay. <laughs> Imagine all those workers who work inside the building, but next to a landfill. So, again, 
NCCO was able to remove all the airborne bacteria, all those unhealthy ingredients in the air, odor, smell as well. Okay, so uh, another example is that the Hong Kong uh, subway station system, which is a very busy network, okay, also uses NCCO in all the public uh, or washroom facilities to remove the odor problem. Okay, so. I'm going to just uh, quickly run through that. Uh, another one uh, is another facility that has already used NCCO is the Hong Kong International Airport. All right. So you can see that NCCO units are also being installed in the washroom facilities there. Okay. Uh, Dr. Kwok. Yep. So far, uh, before COVID came in and caused the pandemic in March 2020, was the main use of these uh, uh, items, these, this equipment, purely to do, uh, remove odors? Uh, was that the main focus? The main focus is not only uh, removed odors, but also purifies the air. Because you can see that, especially in Asia, the population density is pretty high. You know, people work in very small space. Uh, the personal distance is reduced. It's, it's, uh, you know, bacteria virus can easily transmit from one to another person. So not only older, but also for health reasons. But of course, when COVID-19 hits, everybody is even more aware the importance of having a clean airspace. Now, when you mention about COVID-19, okay, let me just, um, uh, 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 share this information with you as well. Uh, some people actually ask me once that, you know what, well, we live in North America, you know, our air quality is pretty good, right? So we've got a lot of space, right? You and I have a good enough distance, right? We maintain our, our minimum requirement of social distancing today, okay, even, right? Why do we need that? Well, let me explain. Yes, our air actually is uh, overall better because of our, all, all the good you know, environmental regulations. However, our air is also full of many different ingredients, allergens, right? chemicals. You know, think about all the household products. We try to keep things clean. Right? We tend to use more chemicals in our, in our home, in our workplace. Right? And imagine how come there are many uh, children who are developing like, you know, airway problems, you know, coughing, you know, itchy skin, eczema, runny nose, okay, hives. Well, a lot of these are caused by allergens, okay, whether they are in the air or on the surface, all right? So what we, what this technology can improve is really to remove or reduce all the allergen exposure, okay? So that's why even without COVID-19, this type of technology is actually pretty useful. Now that COVID-19 has impacted all our lives around the world, okay, this technology is even more critical. Uh, recently, there are reports already confirming that uh, COVID-19 airborne infection is pretty high. One, one example I share with my patients is that Imagine, think about it, you know, we've been talking about using face mask, you know, make sure you wash your hands, don't rub your eyes, don't rub your nose. I mean, we've been talking about this for all, over a year. How come there are still so many infections? Of course, you know, some people don't follow the rules, they, you know, they still, they still socialize, they don't maintain the social distancing. But another important part is the airborne transmission. I just had one patient, uh, who was infected with COVID-19 about three weeks ago. He has been extremely careful. He's got three kids at home, okay? He is not going to play around, okay? He is very religious in keeping good hygiene and good social distancing. So how come he got infected with COVID-19? At the end, he passed COVID-19 to his wife and then also to two of his children, unfortunately, okay? So we went through the history Okay, and the only thing he told me is that he actually went to 
Um, oh, I don't want to use that. <laughs> okay. He actually, because he's doing some home improvements, so he, so he went to a large home improvement store. He spent about two, three hours shopping around for things and bring home. That is the only place he went to. He was wearing face masks. He was very careful with all the hand hygiene. He does not rub his eyes and nose. How come he got it? In the air, fortunately, right? So, any more questions? Not for now, right? <laughs> Feel free, all right? So again, another example is uh, Hong Kong International Finance Center also use NCCO. So again, I don't want to uh, uh, spend too much time on the details, but this is a very interesting uh, example. Okay. So remember, uh, at the beginning I showed you that there are different companies that are already marketing different air purification systems, right? Honeywell is one of those. Okay. But this is the Honeywell headquarters in China. So they actually make air purification systems. Interestingly, they have poor air, air quality and they still use NCCO. <laughs> okay, so this is the Honeywell uh, headquarters there. You can see one type of NCCO air purifier being uh, installed you know, up in the ceiling, okay? So, so this is an inline air unit. Yeah. I have a question for you. Um, RHT Industries, um, are they sole owners of this technology? Uh, yes. And do they um, allow other manufacturers to use it? Uh, they, actually, there are, there are different uh, um, manufacturers that have licensed this technology. It's, it's a patented technology, so it can be licensed. And there are also different facilities that have used NCCO, like a fitness center, okay? Uh, this is a very uh, famous one in Asia, okay? And then, uh, sustainability. Ah, this is a very interesting example that I want to show you, okay? So, uh, this is a Nanchan SAE factory, which manufactures hard disks. You can see that there are a lot of VOCs, fine particles being produced or generated, you know, when they manufacture hard disks, okay? So the problem is a lot of VOCs, okay? And it's not compliant, okay, with the regulations, the local regulations. So what did they do? Well, first, they tried to improve it by using the typical technology. Here, original, originally they actually installed the active carbon filters, which is a common one that we all uh, are, are familiar with, right? And so when you look at the dates here, so this, so this application is done back in 2013, okay? So you can see that uh, in July, okay, 2013, they actually measure before and after, okay, the uh, the VOC concentrations, okay? Here, you have before, uh, before the installation is 73 uh, milligram per cubic meter. Afterward, it, came, it dropped down to 39.8. So, active, uh, active rate carbon can improve it by at least 50%, which is good. A few weeks later, they remeasure it. Initially, it was 68. Afterward, 65. So the reduction is only 4.7%. What happened? <laughs> Again, because active rate carbon, the active sites can get saturated very quickly. Really depends on the, the, uh, the pollutant concentration, right? And then a few more weeks later, they remeasure it. Hey, lo and behold, in this 62, afterwards 79, instead of reducing it, they actually get more. What happened? <laughs> So that is an illustration of uh, secondary pollution, when the sites are all saturated, right? <laughs> so, of course, this is pretty much within a month. What can you do? Well, sure, take the activated carbon out, take the, right? Put, put new ones in, 
you probably have to replace it every two, three weeks. After they've installed NCCO, you can see that in September, they realized that in, in uh, October, things didn't look too good. So uh, they switched over to NCCO. September beginning, 69. Afterward, 32. Again, 50% improvements. Two weeks later, 72, down to 35, 50% improvement. And a month later, 76, 32. Again, it maintains roughly 50% performance. You can see the sustainable benefits of having this technology. So that is actually a good illustration. So here, uh, again, I just want to highlight that, you know, with uh, the powerful uh, activated carbon technology, one really has, has to think about the environmental impact, okay? Uh, but with the NCCO, uh, things are much better, okay? Way better. It is a very green, sustainable, environmentally friendly technology. And imagine all the applications one can use, schools, you know, uh, all the high density area, okay, uh, high chemical uh, industry, okay, shopping malls, hotel, even, you know, office, homes, okay, hospitals, okay. So this is a very powerful, useful technology that is really applicable for so many facets in life, especially right now we are dealing with a pandemic. This technology definitely is a very useful tool to reduce infection very by COVID-19. Excellent. Welcome. Any questions, comments? Yes. Um, restaurants, bars, is that a good application? Yes, restaurants, definitely bars. People, uh, areas that have uh, High occupancy. High occupancy, right? Yeah. And uh, limited space for good social distancing. Okay. Yes. And also, uh, even with face masks, like people say, that, you know what, I'm wearing my face mask. Well, my patient, he wore his face mask when he was shopping for stuff, right? So face masks help. Different grades of face masks can provide different levels of protection, but it's not guaranteed. Okay? Yes. So what? All the things that we do uh, are trying to reduce the risk. There's no one single uh, thing that you can do to guarantee a zero infection unless you don't go, go out at all, right? Exactly, yeah. Do you think there's an opportunity to reduce the, the amount of um, fresh air being brought into spaces and pulled out of spaces if you use the NCCO technology to clean the air? Do you have an example? I'm thinking, in particular, again, washrooms. I'm, yep. think, I'm thinking, in particular, about um, heavily populated areas which need um, uh, uh, gymnasiums, maybe. Yes. Yes. Where you're not only dealing with the uh, uh, the smells and the toxins, but also with just pure fresh air as well. Exactly. And the way it's been treated historically is by pulling it all out. Yes. And replacing with new fresh air, exactly. which has to be treated 100%. Yeah. Yep. Do you think there's an opportunity to reduce that amount of fresh air and therefore reduce the fuel costs? The example I shown earlier exactly illustrate what you just mentioned. Yeah. So the Hong Kong MTL system is an underground subway system. They use it in their underground washroom facilities. Think about every day how many people go to the bathroom. Yeah. How much ammonia has been generated? when people flush, wash their hands, sneeze and cough inside the washroom, how much droplets in the air? Yeah. So the Hong Kong subway system tried to improve with all the other existing technologies. And they don't see, they didn't see good benefits. Yeah. So as you mentioned, what one could do, I mean like to reduce pollution, to improve freshness of air, you know, one could use replacement, air replacement, dilution, whatever yeah. you call it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine the subway system that has been built, okay? You try to drill a new, <laughs> new pipe yeah. from ground down to 
100, 200 feet below, yeah. so costly. But with NCCO, the air can be regenerated from polluted air to fresh air. Exactly. It sounds as though there's benefits to using the NCCO technology in most areas where you have high density. Yeah. A common area in apartment blocks. Yeah. Um, schools, gymnasiums, yes. restaurants, bars. Yeah. Anywhere where the, where the population's quite dense. Yes. This could be a pretty good solution. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So it's a very Excellent. powerful technology. And as I said, the good thing about NCCO is that the core, the NCCO reactor, does not need to be replaced every few months. Okay. Probably seven years, five to seven years, up to, as I said, you know, 10 to 12 years in a, in a laboratory setting. Of course, you know that people don't, don't maintain the unit, then probably that unit won't run well for a long time. But when the users replace the HEPA filters, clean the unit regularly, you can have the unit lasting for a long time. Yeah, yeah. On a much smaller scale, I just put one of these uh, NCCO reactors next to my cat's litter tray. Wow. <laughs> so, so, so what's your feedback? <laughs> the feedback is it's pretty good. Pretty good, eh? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Wing, um, come you. over here. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's see your face again. <laughs> So you put one next to you. <laughs> I did. We have two kittens, and uh, and the smell of the litter tray was not very attractive. So right. I I decided uh, uh, to take one of these uh, units home, one of these, yeah, and uh, put it next to the litter tray. Now there's no smell. I just put it on low speed, 24 <laughs> hours a day. The cats can do whatever they want to do, and there's no no Excellent. disruption to anybody else. So that alone is worth it for me. Yes. That's, that's worth the, uh, <laughs> the, the technology. So uh, thank you to RHT. Wonderful, wonderful. You know, there are so many stories, like, you know, uh, patients come and tell me, you know, how good they feel after they use the NCCO. Uh, yeah. I have parents telling me that in, before using this type of technology, they would use different uh, other uh, air purifiers, mm -hmm. okay, from different brands. I don't want to mention those names. Okay? Yeah, of course. And they will say that, you know what, they don't find air, uh, air, air purifiers work. And so when they were first introduced to this, they were skeptical about this. Okay. Yeah. After they've used it, they realize that those things really work. Their kids, less runny nose, less nasal congestion. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that these are pure. No, these are not. Okay. These will only reduce. Okay. It cannot 100% sure. eliminate. Okay. Exactly. So, but the reduction is always sufficient for people to feel better quality of life. That's the key. And there's so many different applications where I think it could be uh, beneficial. We talked about the, uh, my cat litter. Yeah. <laughs> in the most basic form. Yes. All the way through to capturing um, and, and destroying viruses. Yes. And anywhere in between. Exactly. So, so Dr. Kwok, I, I want to thank you for that today. That's very oh informative. Thank you. And, um, and I'm going to go away from here more informed than I was when I came. Great. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. For and thanks time. for having me to introduce this technology to you and to all your friends. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.